Welcome friends, glad that you could be here. Matthew chapter 25, 1 to 13. We're going to go through the subject of the 10 versions, but before we do that, we'll have a word of prayer and again ask for the Holy Spirit to be our teacher. Let's pray. Our Lord, we thank you so much for your love, for your mercy as we open your word. We ask again for the Holy Spirit to guide us. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And again, welcome. Glad that you could be here. Well, if you've got your Bibles, Matthew chapter 25 and in verse 1. Notice what the Bible says. It says this, Then shall the kingdom of heaven be like unto ten virgins, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. Okay, so here it is. God's people at the end of time. Virgin, woman, pure church. So here's a pure church. Mm -hmm. They're on their way to meet the Lord. They've got their lamps and they're waiting for the second coming. They're waiting for the return of Jesus. Let's read it again real quickly. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be like unto ten virgins which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. Well, the question I want to ask now is, what does the lamp represent in the Word of God? Well, notice this Bible verse here in Psalms 119, 105. Psalms 119, 105. The Bible says, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Well, friends, the lamp represents the Word of God. Amen? Represents the Word of God. But notice this verse also in Proverbs chapter 6 and verse 23. Proverbs chapter 6 and verse 23. For the commandment is a lamp, and the law is light, and reproof of instructions are the ways of light. So here it is. The commandment, the law, is a lamp. So the commandments are a lamp also. But notice this Bible verse here in Isaiah chapter 62 and verse 1. Notice what it says. Isaiah chapter 62 and verse 1. For Zion's sake will I not hold my peace, and for Jerusalem's sake I will not rest, until the righteousness thereof go forth as brightness, and thy, notice the word, salvation thereof as a what? Lamp that burneth. So the salvation also represents a lamp. So when we look at this, notice the lamp represents the word of God, the lamp represents the law of God, and the lamp represents salvation. Salvation. So when we look at this Bible verse again, let's go over it again. Notice, then shall the kingdom of heaven be like unto ten virgins, pure church, which took their lamps, the word of God, the law of God. They understand salvation. We're saved by the blood, precious blood of Jesus Christ. And they went forth to meet Jesus. They're waiting for the second coming of Jesus Christ. Or to meet the bridegroom. Notice this Bible verse here in Matthew chapter 25. 31 to 32. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit on the throne of his glory, and before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate one from another, as the shepherd divideth the sheep from the goats. So here it is. Here it is. They're waiting for the second coming. So the kingdom of heaven is like unto ten virgins. Pure church, mm -hmm. pure message. They have the word of God. They understand the law of God. They understand the subject of salvation. And they're waiting for Jesus to return. Now let's go to Matthew chapter 25 and verse 2. Notice what it says. Notice what it says. It says this. Five of them were wise and five were foolish. Five were wise and five were foolish. Based on this Bible verse, it is very possible, it is very possible to be lost in a pure message. Mm -hmm. We can be lost in a pure message. So friends, the wise and the foolish both had the word of God. The wise and the foolish both understood the law of God. The wise and the foolish understood that we're saved by the precious blood of Jesus Christ. But five were wise and five were foolish. Mm -hmm. Important, isn't it? So notice again, coming to a close soon, says this, Christ Object Lessons, page 406, says this, Two classes of watchers represent two classes who profess to be waiting for the Lord. They are called virgins because they profess a pure faith. Here it is. They all profess a pure faith. They all believe in Jesus Christ. They all understand. They all got the Word of God. I understand the commandments. I understand the 
subject to salvation, but five were wise and five were foolish. Notice this next quote. The class represented by the foolish virgins are not hypocrites. They have regard for the truth. They have advocated the truth. They are attracted to those who believe the truth. But notice this last part. But they have not yielded themselves to the Holy Spirit's working. The third person in the Godhead. They have not yielded to the Holy Spirit's working. So, the kingdom of heaven, like in the ten virgins, pure church, the word of God, the law of God, they understand salvation. Mm -hmm. They're waiting for the second coming, Bible wise, Bible foolish. Mm -hmm. The difference is, friends, the foolish were not relying upon the Holy Spirit. They, were, they weren't following the promptings of the Holy Spirit, as it says here. They did not yield themselves to the Holy Spirit. So friends, as we go through this little series on the Ten Virgins, may God bless you, may He strengthen you as you live for Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Father, we ask for your blessing upon this important subject. And as we go through this little series, we ask for your blessing upon it. And thank you, Lord, for your wonderful love. Thank you for hearing this prayer. And we pray all this in the precious name of Jesus. Amen.